everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we'll be tackling some absolutely huge news concerning the upcoming Wheel of Time television show. I'll also be giving you a quick update on the progress of the website, thegreatblight.com, including some new maps we've made, and just kind of an update on how things are coming along. I want to give a quick thank you to the channel sponsor, audible.com. They've been freaking awesome, but we'll talk about them a little bit more later. One other thing here too, before we dive into the news, YouTube gives us all kinds of analytics about who watches our channels. And the one thing that stands out as odd to me is that roughly 65% of my viewers in the last 30 days are not subscribed to the channel. Now, if you like the content I make, one of the best and easiest ways you can support me is to push that subscribe button. Thank you to all of you that already subscribe and hopefully some of you will like this enough to hit that button today. So let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning for the video. This video will carry a spoiler rating of green, with no spoilers for the plot or really any backstory, I will very, very generally be talking about some basic characteristics of Land Mandragoran, but literally nothing that's gonna be a spoiler, so you should feel free to watch this whether you have read the books or not. So kicking off the news, we have another confirmed hire for the show. Now this isn't a new hire, as he's been working on the series basically since before they even began, but nevertheless, this is another really high caliber hire in a role that will certainly make a difference in the overall quality of the series. Andre Nekvasil, hopefully I'm saying that right, has been confirmed by WattSeries.com to be the production designer for the show. Now, if you're not familiar with the duties of a production designer, this is a very important role within any television show or movie. The production designer is responsible for creating the right atmosphere for each scene. That includes lighting, set design, filming locations, and even some assistance with CGI. The production designer for a show or movie works really hand in hand with the producers from basically pre-production all the way up through wrapping up filming. Like this is a major role on par with producer or director. So given how big of a role this is, who is Andre Nikvasil and how well regarded is he in the industry? Well, just as I've said before on some of the other hires that they brought on for the production team, they are really going all out with this stuff. For one, Andre is an Emmy award winning production designer with more than 20 movies and 11 television series to his name, including The Illusionist, Snowpiercer, and Underworld. In addition to the Emmy, he's won the Blue Dragon Film Award for Best Art Direction, as well as a Grand Bell Award for Best Art Direction for his work on Snowpiercer, which is a really, really good movie uh, that's getting its own television adaptation right now, actually. The hiring of Andre Nekvasil again shows that they are going after some of the best people in the industry to work on the show. I know that it may be hard to get excited for a production designer, but wait till you hear the rest of the news because I think this is all gonna tie together. During the break in filming due to the quarantine, many of the actors and actresses from the Wheel of Time television show have been doing live Q and A's with fans on Instagram. This past month, Daniel Henney, the actor cast to play Land Mandragoran, did a Q and A in which he was asked about the Wheel of Time in addition to some of his other work in his life. When he was asked about the filming of The Wheel of Time, this is actually what he said. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, uh, my new project is uh, The Wheel of Time, based on the amazing, incredible fantasy books written by Robert Jordan. We've been shooting for the past, geez, uh, seven, eight months in the Czech Republic, uh, based in Prague, but shooting all around the Czech Republic. And um, we have, uh, we've been brought home because of the coronavirus, but we still have some left to do. But anyway, that's what's been taking my time up and uh, I posted a lot from Prague and I know some of the other fans didn't know why, but I've been living there because of the Wheel of Time and uh, very, very, very excited about this project. So hearing that, just in case you're curious how long television shows typically take to film, this is referred to as principal photography and can last anywhere from five to 10 months. Given that the Wheel of Time has filmed for eight months, and is not yet finished filming and possibly has at least two episodes left to film for its first season, it seems like Wheel of Time is going to surpass that 10 month mark. Now this is remarkable, and this is telling us that they have gone to great lengths to get the right shots as well as build and visit the right sets and locations to make the show come to life. Daniel was asked what he thought about Lan, and this is what he said. So, similarities between myself and Lan. Um, well, it's kind of hard because Lan is, is arguably the most badass or one of the most badass characters in, in the fantasy world. I don't really want to compare myself to him, but um, I suppose he tames beasts like I have. <laughs> you can see Roscoe's head. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess simply, uh, he, he's very loyal. He's very protective. He's very task oriented. He values duty very much. And I think he, um, he's just such a, he's such a very good 
man. Now, I love that he calls Lan a badass because that's certainly what he is. Hearing him describe Lan the way he does tells me that he has a really firm grasp on the character that he's playing. Uh, but let's hear some more about what Daniel views as the most challenging aspect of playing Lan. Most challenging aspect of playing Lan is um, just the physicality. Just the, the unrelenting physicality of, of the character. I mean, I have played a lot of physical characters and I'm a physical person. I mean, I've played college basketball. I, uh, you know, I practiced martial arts, uh, screen fighting, uh, years and years of, of, of stunt work. And um, this is the first time, like when I first got to the Czech Republic and, and uh, the stunt guys had choreographed some of the scenes we were gonna do. Um, it was the first time in my life when I, I looked at something and I had this sort of fear because I, not, not fear of playing him, but fear of, I don't know if I can pull this off, the physicality, the action, what they're asking of me. Um, but we did, and very, very happy with how it turned out. Um, and that's just a testament to the level of talent uh, the stunt team has and the amount of time that we were given to sort of, to practice and, and just, just put in reps. And so, yeah, it's it's been such an experience for me. It's just, you know, really just surpassing my expectations, uh, even of myself. Um, so it's been it's been really wonderful. So I absolutely love hearing Daniel talk about the physicality of the character and the amount of action and stunts that they're doing for the show. For one, this is telling about one of the reasons they cast Daniel Henney in the first place, as he does have a ton of experience with martial arts and he's in amazing physical shape. But additionally, hearing him candidly describe how difficult it was and how excited he seems that they actually pulled it off has me super excited to see Daniel Henney's take on land. Now this next part is what ties in with production design that we were talking about earlier. So can you talk about the sets a little bit? And are you going back to Prague anytime soon? I can't talk about much, you guys. Can't talk about much, I'm gonna have to wait. It'll be worth it. Um, what I can say is that I have never before in my life seen sets like this. It is incredible. Um, it's like everything you ever dreamed of as an actor, as a fan of these books, I can Im only imagine what it would be like to see these sets. Um, I can also tell you that a lot of people who work on the show have uh, come from you know, they've worked on other projects, other big films, other big shows. I'm talking big and shows you would know. And numerous times I've heard on our set that the sets that we have on Wheel of Time are just incomparable. They're just the best they've ever seen. And they can't believe, you know, that we get to shoot these amazing sets every day. So they are fantastic. Now guys, I know some of you think I'm an Amazon hack because I'm positive about the show most of the time. Uh, it's honestly just that there's been very little negative to talk about in my opinion. Stuff like this is why I'm excited. When you hire an award-winning production designer, spend close to 10 to 12 months filming on location, and people are describing your sets as the best that they have ever seen, and then you combine that with some news that we're about to talk about here in a minute, Tell me why I shouldn't be excited for that. One of my biggest worries about the show going in was that it would be cheap in quality or the detail work that would be missing that would really be needed to make the world feel alive and large. And really based on this kind of stuff, it seems like that is not really gonna be a worry. Have you read the books? Yes, I've read all the books. I'm reading the books, but um, yeah, at some point I will have read all the books, but I'm in the process of reading the books. I mentioned this before with Priyanka, it's not uncommon for actors and actresses to not have read the books before taking a role in an adaptation. Sometimes they're even discouraged from doing so. I don't read too much into this and think that it matters all that much. It can help an actor to be grounded in the scenes that they're filming currently if they don't necessarily know what's gonna happen to their character long term. It is really cool though to know that Daniel is reading the books and he seems to be enjoying them. Now, one other small piece of news here before we get into what is certainly the biggest news, uh, Zoe Robbins, the actress cast to play Nynaeve, did an interview with a New Zealand news station where she mentioned her work on The Wheel of Time. She casually states that the show was supposed to come out in 2021, but they aren't sure about that now, referring to the delay in filming caused by the virus all over the world. Now, I know it would be extremely disappointing to most of us if we had to wait even longer to see the show, and 2022 sounds like an eternity from now. I'd say it's easy just to rush to judgment here and say that she's telling us that we're definitely not going to see it in 2021, but I think that's maybe a stretch. 
The fact is, we don't know how long these shutdowns are going to last in the various countries that they're filming in, as well as the various countries that the actors and actresses are currently residing in. Because again, there are travel restrictions based on where you live. Because of this, there's just a huge amount of uncertainty to things. They also have to deal with weather when they finish too. For instance, if they're filming scenes that they had intended to film in the spring in Prague, so right around now, but they can't get back to filming until December, they may have to wait until spring of 2021 to film those scenes. So it's certainly possible that we may have to wait for some time, but they could be back to filming in the next few months. We really just don't know yet. So we have some major, major news that has me extremely excited. But before we get to that, let me quickly tell you a bit about the channel's sponsor, Audible.com. Audible has been a sponsor of the channel for some time now, and it's really a good match for one reason. They provide audiobooks at an extremely affordable monthly subscription rate, and Wheel of Time has some of the best audiobooks out there. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer have received pretty much universal acclaim for their work on the Wheel of Time audiobooks. The other great news, though, is that because you're a viewer of mine, Audible is going to give you one free audiobook without any commitment. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for the free trial. You can keep the book even if you don't keep the service, but I know once you listen to one, you're going to want to collect the entire series. That's really how I do most of my rereads now. You can find the link to the Audible thing in the description below as well if you don't want to type that in. So what's the major news? Well, I did a video very early on when the Wheel of Time TV show was just even in the writing stages saying that one of the major determining factors for success of the show, in my opinion, was going to be the budget. Well, we finally have an answer to that. Sort of. In some serious investigative reporting, Wattseries.com has outdone themselves yet again to give us this information. And so let me break this all down for you. In January of 2013, yeah, we're going back that far, the Czech Republic created the State Fund of Cinematography, which is basically a program run by the Czech government to incentivize movie and television production companies to come film in the Czech Republic. This is fairly common around the world. Heck, it's even common here in individual U.S. states. But this particular fund offers a 20% cash rebate on spending in the Czech Republic. So this includes hiring locals to work on the filming, paying for filming locations, building sets, CGI, and other post-production work that's done while in the Czech Republic. What it would not include would be the salaries of the foreign-born actors and actresses or the production team. So Rosamund Pike is supposedly receiving $350,000 per episode for her role as Moraine, and that would not count towards this rebate. So here's why all this matters. Wattseries.com reached out to the Czech State Fund of Cinematography and confirmed that the Wheel of Time is set to receive a $14.9 million rebate for the work so far in the Czech Republic, not including all the things that I just said are exempt. So what that means, given that this is 20% of the money spent on the production, in the Czech Republic that the show must have spent at least $75 million. Now, if you include salaries for the production team, actors, actresses, and all the work done outside of the Czech Republic, this means that the Wheel of Time is getting at minimum 80 to $90 million budget for its first season, putting it at the $10 million per episode mark minimum. For comparison, Game of Thrones received $6 million per episode for its first season and $8 million for the rest of its seasons up until the last two, where it got $15 million per episode. Outlander, a very successful fantasy TV show on stars, has received $4.7 million per episode for its budget. This would more than double that. So this is more than we could have wished for, honestly. Amazon is not holding back, and if this is the budget for the first season, we could see even higher budgets for the subsequent seasons if this is a success. I know that we've been saying for months that Amazon would be spending money, but this gives us our first confirmation. And one thing that you cannot say here is that they are not going to spend the money necessary to make the production high quality. So now let's come back to Daniel Henney's comments from earlier, and everything starts to make more sense. They hired a top production designer, they're spending more than $10 million per episode, and the sets are being described by people that worked on Westworld and Game of Thrones, as being the best that they have ever seen. Is anybody else excited? At minimum, I'm excited to see these sets and locations. So if you aren't, I'm honestly not sure what else they could do to get you excited for that. So guys, other than the news, I wanted to give everybody a quick update on thegreatblight.com, the community website that we're building here. Many of you supported its creation and I wanna keep you all updated about the progress and the type of work that we're doing. If you aren't familiar with what I'm talking about, TheGreatBlight.com is going to be a Wheel of Time fan community website that will kind of serve as a gathering place for all types of content about the Wheel of Time. There are going to be podcasts, other YouTubers, musicians, artists, other websites. All they're going to be featured and many other content creators will be able to post their content on the site. Additionally, there will be a completely updated Wheel of Time wiki with new pages 
that are designed to be somewhat spoiler friendly for new readers so they can kind of recap without seeing spoilers. For instance, here's a new page that we've created about Nynaeve. You can see that you'll have control over what you read and just to make sure that a new reader is not going to be spoiled about reading stuff that they have not gotten to yet in the story. As a part of the website, we will also have maps created for each of the individual locations within the story, including ones that we don't have canon maps for. These maps are going to be very detailed, and they will be openly accessible for the public to use. The maps are large files that can be zoomed in on, making them perfect for use in Wheel of Time content creation. Here's an example of a few maps we've been working on. Uh, for an upcoming video series, I'll be collaborating with Lauren from Unraveling the Pattern. So right as I'm filming this, they decided, my uh, landscapers decided to come outside my window and make noise. So, so what's the plan for launch? Well, we're going to try to launch the website here within the next month or two. It will launch with fewer features and far from a complete wiki but I want to get it out there and then we'll just continue to add to it. My main reason is that I want to have a forum to highlight other creators in the community that are up and coming. Uh, I would ask if you are interested in helping with the creation of the site, uh, I can actually use your help. If you're a decent writer and would like to help contribute to the wiki, please join my Discord server uh, with the link below and message me there. I'd love to have you help and we have a team of people working behind the scenes on these articles and I'd love to have more of them. You're going to be featured on the About Us page of the website for being a contributor, so there's that. Additionally, if you are a Wheel of Time content creator to any degree, whether it's you're a YouTuber, a podcaster, you create Wheel of Time art, you make music, you run a Wheel of Time website, please reach out to me on Discord. I have a survey that I'd like to send you, and I want to create a page for you on the website to send people your way, not only to view your work, but also financially support what you're doing if they enjoy your content. Please reach out on Discord. Just click that link in the description below. Guys, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed the content. And as I said at the beginning of the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel as it really helps us grow here. Do not be a part of the 65% that are watching and not subscribing. <laughs> All right, you can if you want. But subscribe, it would be great. Uh, check out the Patreon link in the description if you want to support the channel here and get early access to the maps I'm making. I'm posting them there where you can download them and look at them and all that. Uh, you can access all of those on the Patreon. Click the link in the description below. Guys, thanks again for watching. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. A mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?